inside any hemoglobin molecule, we'll always find four individual polypeptide chains. Two of these chains are identical alpha units and the other two chains are identical beta units. And what this means is, in any given hemoglobin molecule, we'll always find a ratio of one alpha unit to one beta unit. So one alpha polypeptide always combines with one beta polypeptide unit to form that hemoglobin molecule in which we have two dimers, two alpha beta dimers. Now, interestingly enough, if we examine and study the human genome molecule, so all the DNA molecules found inside the human cell, we're going to find four genes that code for the alpha units, but we're only going to find two genes that code for the beta unit. So for some reason inside our genome, we have twice as many genes that code for the alpha subunit than the beta subunits. Now, why can that be a problem? Well, let's assume that all these genes are expressed and they're expressed at the same exact rate. Now, what that implies is at the end, we're going to produce twice as many alpha subunits as beta subunits because we have twice as many alpha genes. So if we produce, let's say 1 million alpha units, we're going to produce only 500,000 of the beta subunits, so twice as less. Now, why is that a problem within our red blood cells? Well, because inside any hemoglobin molecule, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence, one-to-one -one combination between the alpha and beta subunits. At the end of our reaction, when all the beta subunits are used up, we're going to have an excess amount of alpha subunits left over inside our blood plasma. And the problem with that is these alpha subunits can form aggregates because they can bind to one another to form these complexes. And these complexes will become insoluble. And what that means is they will precipitate out of the blood plasma and that can form and, and that can cause many different types of problems. So what does our body do to prevent the aggregation and the precipitation of these alpha complexes? Well, inside red blood cells, we have these special proteins known as the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein or simply AHSP. And this protein is shown on the board with this brown color. So this is the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein. Now, this is a single monomer of the alpha polypeptide chain of the hemoglobin molecule. So we have these alpha helixes, this is the heme group, and this is an oxygen atom. So the oxygen can either be bound to that heme group or it can be unbound. In this particular case, the oxygen is bound to that heme group. Now, what the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein does is it actually binds onto this alpha polypeptide chain on the same region of that alpha unit as where the beta unit would bind. And when the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein binds onto this alpha unit monomer, it forms a dimer complex that is more stabilized than when it exists in its individual form and it is also soluble in the blood plasma. And by forming this complex, it basically prevents the aggregation and the precipitation of those alpha unit complexes. And this prevents many, many problems. So once again, red blood cells produce a protein called alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein. This protein binds onto the alpha subunit monomers to form soluble dimers. And this is precisely what prevents the aggregation of those alpha subunits to form insoluble precipitates that can basically precipitate out of the, uh, out of the blood plasma and form and cause many different types of problems. Now, as the red blood cells produce the beta subunit, what happens is that beta subunit will basically displace and replace the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein. It will basically kick off this protein and form the alpha beta dimer. And that's because if we examine the energy value of the alpha beta dimer and the alpha AHSP complex, this will have a higher energy and will be slightly less 
less stable than the alpha beta dimer. And because of this energy difference, that basically drives the equilibrium towards the side where we form that alpha beta dimer. So this is described in the following diagram. So Initially, we have an excess amount of alpha subunits, and so what happens is, to prevent the aggregation of these alpha complexes, our cells use the alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein to basically form this complex that is stable enough and soluble in the blood plasma, so the alpha HSP complex. And then when we have enough beta subunit, so when the beta subunits are produced by the red blood cells, they can then begin displacing this molecule and forming the alpha beta dimer. And this dimer is is more stable than this dimer. That's precisely what drives the equilibrium towards this side, towards this molecule. And notice that our beta unit binds onto that alpha unit on the same side, on the same face as the AHSP molecule. So to conclude, to prevent aggregation of these alpha subunits inside our blood plasma, our body, our red blood cells use this special protein we call alpha hemoglobin stabilizing protein to form these dimers that are soluble in water in our blood plasma and so they can exist without precipitating out of that blood plasma and this can prevent many different types of medical problems and medical conditions.